So during this demonstration, we are going to explore a knowledge graph for automobile manufacturing supply chain data, looking to identify and investigate fragility in the supply chain. So there are really many ways to visualize a knowledge graph, but let's start by targeting a specific automobile manufacturer. Here we can see all of the data available in the knowledge graph we're showing in the network. The users can then search by label to find the data that they want to populate their graph with and can also search for and select multiple items. At the bottom, you can see the items you have selected to see in your network. In this case, a car manufacturing group. On the left, you can see the incoming and outgoing nodes. In this case, the 40 potential suppliers. And we can dig into their relationships with the automobile manufacturer by rendering a few on the graph. We can continue to expand this network out, for example, to see downstream refineries. We may know that cobalt is a key raw mineral in car manufacturing and want to see if cobalt has a relationship with these refineries and suppliers. So we can add data from across the entire graph to the network visual. Here we can now see cobalt in the graph, which represents the ways that the car manufacturer is supplied cobalt through the supply chain already rendered in your view. Now that we know there's a relationship between cobalt and car manufacturing, maybe we want to search for any known links between cobalt and the car manufacturer using pathfinding. This is a critical tool in investigating a supply chain weakness. For example, where refineries or suppliers are overly dependent on a few mines or countries. When using pathfinding, we are generating a query in the backend to find the relationships between two entities. So now that we've added a significant amount of the network to our graph, we can start exploring the graph further and performing analysis. So at the top of the hierarchy, we have the car manufacturer. The 40 nodes in the next layer of the hierarchy are the potential suppliers of the manufacturer. We can then see refineries that supply cobalt to tier one suppliers. The nodes below that are mining companies that supply these refineries cobalt. So without looking at the network view of the supply chain, you may assume that the network is relatively stable because you have 40 possible suppliers of cobalt for a car manufacturer. However, when you dig into this graph and do more graph analysis to investigate one level deeper, you'll discover that there are several tier one suppliers that are supplied by the same refineries. And then even more concerningly, these refineries are all supplied by only two mining companies. With network view and analysis, we can see the fragility in the system because a single mining company supplies most of the supply chain. So we can dig into this further and find the mines associated with each mining company. We can see that these two mines are located in one country, the DRC. Noticeably, both mines that supply cobalt to refineries are also located in the DRC. From here, we may want to understand if there are additional mines in the DRC that our supply chain relies on. And we can see that all of the mines that supply this chain with cobalt even though they are owned by different companies, are located in the same country. This exploration has highlighted now three points of fragility in the supply chain. The first being that the car manufacturer tier one suppliers all depend on a few cobalt refineries. The second point of risk is that these refineries rely on only two mining companies for cobalt mining. And the third point of fragility is that all of the mines that supply these mining companies are located in the DRC. So in just a few minutes, we were able to identify key supply chain fragility issues that would have been really difficult to do with traditional approaches, but really critical to understand. So going forward, analysis could build on this approach to continue exploring knowledge graph and generating novel insights. So that's it for this demo. I hope you found it useful and maybe aspirational.